Okay, it is 701. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Mr. Taylor, if you lead us in tonight's prayer, please. Sure. Uh, dear Lord, please look over all of us, our citizens in uh, our great city of Nelsonville and uh, look over our decision makers today and make sure that they are keeping cool, conscious, and making strong decisions for our, our city, making us grow, continuing to move forward. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Call the roll, man. Mr. Taylor. Here. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Here. Ms. Grant? Here. Mr. Booth? Here. Ms. Jones? Here. All right. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes from the last regular meeting, August 23rd, September 2nd, and September 8th special meetings? Um, I forget which one, the very last one. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I think it said that um, Ms. Jones was not here and that she introduce something so i don't know oh, okay. Do both. <laughs> okay okay the so i missed the special meeting the two special meetings yeah yeah, yeah. The last president. yeah it says 2247 she introduced uh -huh. in the last meeting 2240 okay it says to remove okay i guess yeah. i didn't introduce that <laughs> no i think that was came from that side of the room Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any council discussion on these? Okay. Motion to adopt. So, move so. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Okay. Do we have any citizens' comments out there tonight? The pressure is all looking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can say a lot, but you probably wouldn't like to hear it, would they, Corey? That's why we're here. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, business and organizational comment. No. Okay. All right. Committee discussions. Um, I know that uh, we need to have a uh, police and fire meeting. Um, if we can schedule one for next week. What day works for you? Next for week? me, next week, any day. Okay. As long as it's in the evening. Oh, yeah. Fine, so. mm -hmm. Shoot for Wednesday. Sure. I work for you, Dan. What do you, you want to do day? Monday? We do Monday. Monday? Sure. Monday at 7? Monday. 7 p.m.? Yep, 7 p.m. That would be the uh, 20th. I guess today, Thursday. And are you the uh, chair of utilities again? Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, you are acting chair. He's a double chair. Do we yes. uh, do we need a utility committee meeting? Oh, I don't know. I don't think Scott. I just want to clarify you were back in that. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Uh, we had a finance meeting on the seventeenth. And we started discussions for next year's budget, um, a three year plan for street paving and repairs, and possibly making a donation for Pray to the Home. Nice. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All right. We are moving on to department updates. Mr. Jason Cohen for the utility department here is here tonight. Jason, you have the floor. Let's start with the ceiling on the roofs. So if anybody's watching at home, there's been a lot of negative comments about where asphalt and then it's not actually asphalt. We understand the roads are good. It's a sealer that gives them up to six more years of life. And it's a very, very small fraction of the cost of asphalt. So we're, we're sealing Columbus Street, the square, Fayette Street, Rocky Boot Way. And if we have any leftover, we're going to do September Street. But it's it's not pavement for those that keep thinking that we're wasting money on pavement on streets that are good. It's not actually pavement. Um, we just got our second 4,000 gallon tank of it. We're going to get a third. 
next week. Um, Mill Street, I know everybody's wondering about Mill Street. All the services have been tied over at four. They'll be tied over in the morning. The old main will be killed as soon as they are tied over. But hopefully that does away with the mess we've had up there over the years. Um, tentative, three weeks on asphalt from Mill Street. Um, St. John Street, they, he told me tonight that they got about a week left there. We're going to repair the road. We're not paving John, St. John Street. That was The plan was to pave it. Columbia Gas is coming through next year with another project, and they're going down the road. We're not going to pave it for them to cut it right open and tear it out again next year. So we'll wait till after they're done and pave it next year. So we're waiting on McKee for a couple other streets that we had in mind, get quotes on it instead of St. John Street. Um, we have had 23 leaks since the last time I updated. It's been quite a bit. There was three today. So, I mean, the guys are staying busy. There's seven of them. They really bust their butts to get out there and get everything done and make things happen. They actually came in yesterday for four hours to get a section of Columbus Street so we didn't have to affect any of the businesses. But the bank drive throughs being the two biggest ones. Um, and we have put down 50 tons of patch this year so far. Hey, um, Mill Street got new water line too, correct? It, yeah, it's, it's got a new water main and they've got all the services tied over except for, it was either three or four. And they'll be tied over by 10 a.m. Okay. And then we can go up and kill the old main and hopefully not have the headache that street has caused for a long time. So it'll be new water and sewer for them? It's new water. Okay. It's not new sewer. Um, we don't have, I wish I had to mop on. we don't have sewer issues up there. And then right now it runs, it's on the backside of the curb. It's double main. So if there is an issue, we can get to it without tearing the road up. Okay. Um, it does churn down towards Cotner and churns goes under. <coughs> We're going to go in and, and dig down the sides and, and redo that, but we can do that after they're done and out of the way. So we're not getting confused with the mess that they made. We, we take a lot of heat for that company. It, most companies, they don't have the name on the vehicle, so everybody automatically assumes it's the city. We take a lot of grief for a lot of things. You will be paid. That will be paved, correct? Mill Street will be paved. paved. Yeah, that's what I said. Ten of the three weeks is what you think. Okay. Um, the sewer plant, the new sewer plant's coming along. It's, it's on schedule. Uh, if I remember right, November 23rd of next year is the completion date. And then they, I talked to Michael Best today. Everything's still on schedule. And the complete overall completion date with the old plant being torn down is January 22nd of 03. 03? 23. 23. 23. Yeah. So got that three on the back there. I thought that was going to turn into a lift station or pumping station. There, there's a brand new lift station there. there so there's already a brand new lift station. They're going to get rid of the rest of the station. The that buildings, they everything is going to lift. Um, I, I have noticed a few things on those buildings that we're going to get off before they completely destroy it. All the lights. Outside light fixtures or original light fixtures from when it was built, and then all of them still work. We're going to get those off. Of There's a plaque inside, too. There's um, a plaque we plan on getting that yeah. out okay. and putting it down at the new plant. There's just some little things that they're going to come out of there before it gets stored out. I think a lot of people would appreciate those types of sentiments. Um, the uh, St. John Street. Um, do you, does Columbia Gas, are they giving you like a timeline on when they anticipate being? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Just next year. I didn't know if they had like a um, I've planned sent, out date for them. They, so. they have one of their engineers contact me about all the uh, water and sewer. So I sent all that to them that we know of where it's at. They'll draw their plans up, but they said it's for next year. So. In this late in the year, I'd say it'd probably be spring next year. If they're already asking for that, it'd probably yeah. be spring. Okay. I'm sure in spring next year. So then they could be in line then to pay potentially next fall or next summer. We will pay. We'll pay. Yeah. yeah. They just do a, a trench, and it's not very wide. Just wide enough to put pipe down in. 
pretty much. They usually use a foot bucket and just go down through and do what they got to do. Okay. They, they'll replace concrete. They'll do the concrete up instead of the CDF. Columbia Gas likes to do concrete, which we're fine with. It's, it's just a little bit harder for us to dig through, but it's more of a sturdy base, and then we'll come through after they're done. Okay. Okay. Can you tell you how many streets that we're going to do next year? There's everything in St. John's, St. Charles, everything up in there, Groves, over to Grosvenor, and down to Hopper, I believe. So everything up in that region right there is getting really done. Nice. Is it going to be Columbia Gas? Is it going to be their, one of their contracts? It'll probably be one of their contracts. Right? If, if I had to guess, it'll probably be R&R. &R. They were the ones the that ones did the last, last one. Year. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So they did I, a nice job. They, they do do a pretty good job. and I mean, they work very well with the city. They, they're not afraid to call up for help or they need something. When they put that back on Pleasant View, they did a nice job. Like, it's not... I mean, they, they did work pretty well. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's in there good, and they sealed it up nice. So yeah. I appreciate the good work. Any more questions for Mr. Cullen? Okay. Thank you, Jason. Hey, Jason Thank you very much. Go ahead, ma'am. Have you ever thought about Second Street? Yes, yeah, so it's on schedule to get the potholes filled right now. This year? Yeah, as soon as we can get a chance, like yeah. I explained earlier, well, it's we, 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 we have seven people that try to keep yeah, up with everything. You told me that a while ago. Yeah, and then we're doing the best we can. Uh, my daughter's lived there since 19, well, 60 some years anyway, and they've never done anything to Second Street. It's terrible. It will be done. We'll, we'll, we'll make something happen. If it's not this year, it'll be in the spring, but we I'll won't make something happen with that. I'll haunt you. I'll give you my address. <laughs> closer, you're, and you're referring to closer to like the high street. High street. Area. There's a lot of second nature. Between Walnut and the high, it's terrible. It's really bad, okay. Bad. Oh, yeah, and they is. never do anything to it. <laughs> I was about to fell out of it today, driving on the fire, the fire truck. Yeah, where'd you go? Was there a car? Yeah, it's a nice little call, but it's pretty bumpy. Let's try. Oh, Mr. Cohen, you, Second Andy. Street, put that on your agenda. Uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Thank you. All right. Going on with the first reading. Ordinance 67-21. Uh, I need someone to introduce it, please. I'll introduce it. Thank you. Yeah. An ordinance authorizing the city manager, Scott Frank, to execute a contract with Artisan of Pioneer Water Treatment Systems and declaring an emergency. Whereas it is desirable to sign a contract with Artisan of Pioneer Water Treatment Systems for bulk amount of salt to be supplied to the city of Nelsonville. Now, therefore, be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Adams County, Ohio, as follows. The city manager, Scott Frank, is authorized to execute the contract with Artisan of Pioneer Water Treatment System. The city manager is authorized to expend an amount approved by council for said bulk amount of salt. <clears throat> this ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 731.30 because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary for the water plant and this ordinance shall be... Are we disturbing you guys? and effect upon its adoption. Bill enacted by council on first reading under suspension of the rules the 13th day of September 2021. Okay. All right, any council discussion on this matter? So how would we approve it to an expended amount if we don't know what the amount is? That's a great question. I think this is just a precursor. Yeah, when have to when have you make a motion to expend an amount, he has a right to sign the contract like yeah. that. I think this has given him the authority to sign. I think it's a precursor because it's needed for them to keep moving on the water and for the water. But then what the if we don't like the amount? He doesn't sign it. That's right. The he will be approved by council, number two. It has to be approved by us, the amount. Mm -hmm. So he'll bring it back to us. Yes, he'll, he'll bring it back to us with an amount. Or Bob, I ask, could, could that also be something that's like 
ultimately will be in the budget for next year. Sure. And when we that. pass the budget, it'll all be part of Absolutely. that budget package. As long as you have authority, so that would be and he can sign right. the contract. Exactly. Okay. So we're not stuck with no salt. Right. There are no uh, snowstorms. Yeah. All this is for the water treatment. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Move to the Yes. Second. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Motion okay. to adopt. I'll move to adopt. Second. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dumpy? Yes. Okay. Uh, ordinance 68 21. Need someone to introduce it, please? I'll introduce it. Thank you, Bob. An ordinance reaffirming the current monthly salary rate of council members and council president for 2021 and declaring an emergency. Whereas the state auditors have requested an ordinance reaffirming the current monthly salary rate for council members and council president. Whereas the city of Nelsonville, Nelsonville City Charter, Article 4, Section 15, sets the provisions established, establishing year, yearly salaries of council members and the council president. Whereas the monthly salary for council members has been $100 and the monthly salary for the president has been $200. Whereas an ordinance is necessary to reaffirm these monthly salary amounts respectively. Now therefore be ordained by the council of the city of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio as follows, that council members shall be paid a monthly salary of $10,000. No. Okay, I like that one. <laughs> wow. Well, there we go. Motion to approve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how they do raise. <laughs> that council members shall be be paid a monthly salary of $100 in accordance with Article 6, Section 15, Council Compensation of the Nelsonville City Charter. That Council President shall be paid a monthly salary of $200 in accordance with Article 6, Section 15, Council Compensation of the Nelsonville City Charter. This ordinance shall be passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 731.30 because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary to appease the request of the state auditor and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Duly only enacted by council on first reading under suspension of the rules the 13th day of September 2021. Any council discussion on this? Motion to suspend. So moved. I guess the only thing I would add is just so people know that this is the same salary that's been in place since the charter was adopted in, in 1990. Yeah, four. Yeah, so it's not changed. It has not changed at all. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Motion to suspend. Second. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Gumpy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. All right. We're on ordinance 69 21. I need someone to introduce it, please. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. An ordinance approving a change order for phase one wastewater project and declaring a, an emergency. Whereas a final balancing change order is necessary for completion of phase one of the wastewater project. And whereas the total change of $30,635.70 is necessary in order to complete phase one. Whereas each specific change is demonstrated in exhibit one attached here to attach. Whereas Plenty of contingency funds are available from the Environmental Protection Agency to cover this change. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, as follows. That City Manager Scott Frank will have the authority to accept the change order and to expend the necessary and appropriate, fu appropriate funds provided from the EPA as demonstrated in the contract change order attached as Exhibit 1. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 731.30, 
because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary for Rock River construction to complete phase one of the wastewater project, and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. The only enacted by council on first reading under suspension of the rules on the 13th day of September 2021. Okay, any council discussion on this matter? Uh, Mr. Carroll, do you know um, when phase one will be completed? Do you know what the date is approximately? I do not know. They still got quite a bit of data in there. Proper for this. Okay. Which okay. is our same contractor doing the water line. Okay. All right. All right. Motion to suspend. So moved. Second. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dumpy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Move to the bill. Second. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dumpy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Okay, ordinance 70-21. Can someone introduce it, please? I'll introduce it. Thank you. Thank you. An ordinance authorizing city manager Scott Frank to hire 2021 seasonal pool employees at minimum wage and to hire pool manager at a salary of $1,052.64 bi-weekly, effective as of May 1, 2021, and declaring an emergency. Whereas a pool manager and seasonal help at the Nelsonville City Pool was needed and was hired as a necessity, and whereas the state auditor has requested an ordinance for pool staffing relating back to May 1, 2021. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Adams County, Ohio, as follows. City Manager Scott Frank shall be granted authority the authority to hire a pool manager at a bi-weekly salary of $1,000. $54.64. City Manager Scott Frank shall be granted the authority to hire seasonal pool employees at minimum wage. This ordinance is being passed with an effective date as of May 1, 2021. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 731.30 because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary to appease the request of the state auditor and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Duly enacted by council on first reading and suspension of the rules on the 13th day of September 2021. Council discussion on this matter? Yeah, I would just like to say so it doesn't happen again. We did try to do this, but it was mentioned by someone that we didn't have. I do remember so. that. Absolutely correct. Thank you, Ms. Grant. Um, Okay, motion to suspend. Motion. Second. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Okay. Motion to adopt. I'll move to adopt. Second. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. All right. Ordinance. Yeah. So it's easy. It's very easy. Bob flex his muscles on this one. Yeah. All right. If you need to come up for air. If you need a recess. Yeah. Just we'll do it. All right. Um. Ordinance 70 dash or I'm sorry 71 dash 21. Need someone to introduce it, please. I'll introduce it. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, the contract of employment, Nelsonville City Manager. This agreement made and entered into this 10th day of February 2020 by and between the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, a municipal corporation. Here and after called employer and Gregory Scott Frank here and after called employee. Witness, witnesses, whereas employer desires to retain, 
retain the services of said employee as acting city manager of the city of Nelsonville as provided by the charter of the city of Nelsonville, Ohio and pursuant to ordinance 10-20 and whereas it is the desire of the Nelsonville City Council here and after called council to provide certain benefits, establish certain conditions of employment and to set working conditions of employee. And whereas it is the desire of council, one, to secure and retain the services of, of employee, two, to make it to make possible full work productivity by assuring employees' morale and peace of mind with respect to future security, three, to act as a deterrent against malfeasance, misfeasance, nonfeasance, or other failure of good behavior on part of the employee. And four, to provide a procedure for termination employee services at such time as he may be unable to fully discharge his duties due to age or disability or when employer may otherwise desire to terminate his employment. Whereas employee has accepted employment as city manager of the city of Nelsonville, Ohio. Now therefore be in consideration of the mutual covenants herein contained, the parties agree to as follows. Section one, duties. During the period of employment herein described, the employee is an at-will employee who shall perform the duties of city manager in accordance with the directions of council and as said duties are prescribed by the charter of the city of Nelsonville, Ohio, or the laws and constitution of the state of Ohio as the same now exist or as they may be amended subsequently and all ordinances lawfully enacted pursuant thereto and such other duties as council may lawfully assign to the employee. Section two is term. A, employee has served a probationary period of 90 days as acting city manager. City council did not discharge employee during said 90 day period for any reason. B, employee was hired on a permanent basis. Employee shall be the city manager on a permanent basis for a period of three years commencing February 5th, 2020. Employee has an option at the expiration of the three-year contract to extend the contract for an additional year, i.e. a fourth year. Nothing in this agreement shall prevent, limit, or otherwise interfere with the right of counsel to terminate the services of employee at any time subject only to the provisions set forth in Section 4, paragraphs A and B of this agreement. C, nothing in this agreement shall prevent, limit, or otherwise interfere with the right of the employee to resign at any time from his position with employer. D, employee agrees to remain in the exclusive full-time employee of employer beginning February 5th, 2020 until such time as employee resigns, retires, or is terminated by city council and not to become employed by any other employer until employee resigns, retires, or his employment is terminated by council as here and after provided. Section three, suspension or termination. Employer may suspend employee with or without pay and benefits at any time and may terminate employee at any time. Employee is hired as a permanent city manager in accordance with Article 5, Section 5.01 of the City Charter. Section 4, Termination and Severance Pay. A, in the event employee is terminated by City Council, after employee has been appointed as permanent city manager and during such time the employee is willing and able to perform his duties under this agreement, then in that event, employer agrees to pay employee a lump sum some cash payment equal to four weeks salary, include, including accrued and unused vacation. Provided, however, that in the event employee is, term, is terminated because of his conviction of any illegal act, then in that event, employer shall have no obligation to pay the aggregate severance designated in this paragraph. B, in the event employee voluntarily resigns his position with employee, with him, um, the employer shall give employer employee shall give the employer two weeks notice in advance unless the parties otherwise agree. Section five disability. 
If employee is permanently disabled or is otherwise unable to perform his duties because of sickness, accident, injury, mental incapacity, or health for a period of four successive weeks beyond any accrued sick leave, or for 20 working days over a 30-day working period, employer shall have the option to terminate this agreement subject to the severance pay requirements of Section 4, Paragraph A. Section 6, Salary. Employee salary from February 5, 2020 to December 31, 2020 was $57,000. Employee starting salary shall be $60,000 annually, retroactively applied to January 1, 2021, which shall be paid in biweekly installments. Employee shall not be entitled to overtime compensation. Employee is entitled to a merit-based bonus at countless discretion. Section 7, Performance Evaluation. A, Council shall review and evaluate performance of the employee at it on an annual basis. Further, Council or designee of Council shall provide an adequate opportunity for employee to discuss his evaluation with Council. B, Annually, council and employees shall define such goals and performance objectives, objectives which they determine necessary for the proper operation of the city of Nelsonville and the attainment of council's policy objectives, said goals and objectives, objectives to be reduced to writing. They shall generally be attainable within the time limit as specified and the annual operating and capital budgets and appropriations provided. C, in effecting the provisions of this section, council and employee mutually agree to abide by the provisions of applicable law. <laughs> section 8, Hours of Work. The parties realize that the position of city manager requires the person holding such position to work many weekends, evenings, and other irregular hours at many locations outside of City Hall, during which hour City Hall is not open. The parties further realize that such work during these times is of equal importance to the City Manager's normal daily duties at City Hall. Therefore, in order to encourage employees to undertake such work at such irregular hours and still provide employee with a reasonable limitation of the total number of hours, and still provide employee with a reason with a reasonable limitation of the total number of hours which he may be required to work in any given week. It is understood and agreed that employees shall work whatever hours as may be necessary in order for him to fulfill the requirements of the position of city manager, but in any event, not less than 40 hours per week, unless on sick leave, holiday, vacation, or other leave approved by council. Section 9, Outside Activities. The employee shall not, not spend more than 10 hours per week in teaching, counseling, or other non-employer connected business without prior approval of counsel, and shall keep counsel apprised of the hours each week spent in teaching, counseling, or other non-employee connected business. Section 10, Automobile. Employee may use the city vehicle during work hours for city business, the same as other city employees. Employee may not use the city vehicle for his personal use, nor for transportation to and from work. Section 11, Vacation. Employee shall be entitled to earn three weeks of vacation leave per year, which will, will begin accruing on his started date. Section 12, Sick Leave. Employees shall earn sick leave in accordance with Ohio Revised Code, Section 124.39. Section 13, Indemnification. To the extent the City of Nelsonville Liability Insurance covers acts or omissions of employee, employers shall defend, safe harmless, and indemnify employee against any tort, professional liability claim or demand, or other legal action whether groundless or otherwise, arising out of an alleged act or omission uh, occurring in the performance of employees' duties as city manager. The employer may compromise and settle any such claim or suit and pay the amount of any settlement or judgment rendered thereon. The city of Nelsonville shall have no obligation to indemnify, indemnify 
employed for costs not covered by its liability insurance. Section 14, bonding. Employer shall bear the full cost of and fidelity or other bonds re required of employee under any law or ordinance. Section 15, other terms and conditions of employment. Council shall fix any such terms and conditions of employment as it may determine from time to time relating to the performance of employee, provided such terms and conditions are not inconsistent with or in conflict with other provisions of this agreement, the city charter or any other law. Unless otherwise specified herein, employees shall be entitled to benefits of employees covered by the city's general compensation plan for all unclassified and various classified employees. Employees shall not be eligible for coverage under Nelsonville health insurance policy. Section 16, notices. Notices pursuant to this agreement shall be given by deposit in the custody of the United States Postal Service postage paid address as follows. Employer, clerk of council, Nelsonville City Hall, 210 Hope Drive, Nelsonville, Ohio, 45764, with a copy to K. Robert Toy, Nelsonville City Attorney, 50 and a half South Court Street, Suite A, and Ohio, 45701. Employee, Gregory Scott Frank, Office of the City Manager, Nelsonville City Hall, 211 Lake Hope Drive, Nelsonville, Ohio, 45764, or at his last current residential address. Alternatively, notices required pursuant to this agreement may be personally served in the same manner as is applicable to civil justice judicial practice. Notice shall be deemed given as of the date of personal service or as of the date of deposit of such written notice in the course of transmission in the United States Postal Service. Section 17, General Provision. A. The text herein shall constitute the entire agreement between the parties. B. This agreement shall be binding upon and in order to the benefit of the heirs at law and executors of employees. C. This agreement shall become effective commencing February 5th. Special meeting held on February 4th, 2020. D. If any Provision or any portion thereof contained in this agreement is held unconstitutional, invalid, or in unenforceable. The remainder of this agreement or portion thereof shall be deemed serviceable, shall not be affected, and shall remain in full force and effect. E. Employee has opted out of medical insurance at, and is entitled to $2,000 annually paid in 12 equal payments over the calendar year. Employee has opted into dental and vision at no cost to employee. In witness thereof, whereof the city of Nelsonville has caused this agreement to be signed and executed on its behalf, pursuant to authority and directions given by city council in council ordinance 10-20, passed February 10, 2020. Anthony Duffy, president of Nelsonville City Council, on behalf of the city and employee, have caused this agreement to be signed and executed in duplicate at Nelsonville, Ohio, this 10th day of February, 2020. Okay. I have a question for Bob. Right. Um, so I understand like why we're doing this and why the dates are as they are. But the sixty thousand dollar increase in pay and the merit base was something that we changed this year. So does that need to be? What was it changed? Yes. Okay. Twenty twenty one. And you need to change that to make it this year. So it does, it does say that, but I'm just saying because then this is being signed that it was like as of February twenty twenty, but that actual part of it was. It's just saved. being being retro. The fifty seven thousand. 2520 should then be to does it have the end date there as it says right the applied so that's right all i'm saying is in the end. like the end because at the end it's saying on the 10th day of february 2020 which is when scott was first hired but that particular part on section six salary was something we did and asked our former city attorney to execute the contract for 
after this year's 2021 performance review. Did it begin January 1st, 2021? We wanted it to go retroactive to yeah. January 1st. That's what it says. That's what it says. Okay. okay. It's okay. Because we, we announced what his salary was until December 31st, 2020. And then we said, this is what your salary is. Okay. So I was just asking because it says here on the 10th of February 2020, even though that was something that we decided in 2021. We put, that's why we're prepared. Okay. Provision I just wanted to make sure that was, that was. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. We passed an ordinance on that. What was it? The the bottom 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 bottom. I thought we passed them for the I know I, for the auditor, the deputy auditor. I don't think we did one for the city manager. The city was, manager had a bond uh, in an amount of seventy five thousand, I believe. When, but that was the fact. Sure. I don't know for sure. The Joe Shearer yeah. and yeah. yeah. I don't have a question. Just to go ahead. see if I understand this right. So it says the contract is three years, but it started February twenty twenty. It says that. that does that mean we're a year and a half through the three years then? Yeah. Okay. With basically what it says, right, Bob, is that it can go on now that we have this piece of paper, it now can go on that, indefinitely. Go on. Yeah, we don't ever yeah. have to like revisit, we can change the salary, we can do whatever. We have the gist of everything here. We won't ever have to do this big contract. The again. basic agreement. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Any more council discussion? All right. Is this on an emergency? I suspension. Yes. Yeah, Special minute. Mm -hmm. I didn't declare it as an emergency. Uh, it says it on here under suspension of the rules. Suspension. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Suspension. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. That's the resolution. That's the resolution, too. I agree. Okay. I know. All right. Okay. Should we just do it as first reading? Yeah, or? I would. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, Susan. That's an instance. <laughs> We're going to have an abbreviated version. Like, Maybe we could just play back the recording next time. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Does it need Wait, to say that on there? there? <laughs> it does uh, on the big copy. I think it does say first reading. Yeah. Yeah. On the on the actual, because there's a couple of little typos in it too. Right. Oh. All right. You ready? Sure. Okay. Resolution twenty two forty eight. Get someone to introduce it, please. I'll introduce it. Thank you. Yeah, it's about to be really quiet right now. Okay. A resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the County Auditor. Whereas City Council is required by law to accept the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorize the necessary tax levies and certify them to the County Auditor for the fiscal year commencing January 1st, 2022. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Atkins County, Ohio, the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission attached hereto and incorporated herein by reference are adopted and the necessary tax levies are authorized and certified to the County Auditor. This resolution shall become effective at the earliest date provided by law, bill enacted by Council on first reading this 13th day of September 2021 under suspension of the rules. All right. Any council discussion on it? I don't really understand what this is about. It is. This, this happens at least once a year. Okay. Is it just because like we already have levies in place and this is because next year we'll get new levy amounts as the budget commission the, and property authorize. valuations and all that changes? So it just kind of kind of goes with everything. Update? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Motion then, to suspend? Yeah, I'll move to suspend. <laughs> Second. Mr. Boone? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. <laughs> I'll move to adopt. Thank you. Second. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Grant. Yes. Mr. Yes. All right. City manager is not here tonight. Um, is was Becky doing his report? Or no? No. No. Okay. 
All right. Um, we are to the good of the order. Um, start off with Ms. Jones. I'll start. Um, I actually, this is a little late, um, but I wanted to, um, during the Parade of the Hills at the Old Timers game, we honored Hootie Wynn um, who stepped aside after the season as the um, UC like, commissioner, for lack of a better term. Um, so I just want to give a shout out to Hootie and to his wife Maureen, who um, really served the citizens, the, the youth of Nelsonville um, with our baseball and softball leagues for a number of years. Um, and then also Hootie reached out to me um, after that and actually secured for us a very sizable donation of baseball equipment, um, batting, what do you call them? Batting helmets and uh, catcher's gear from a sporting goods vendor that he had worked with in the past and they had this equipment that they um, needed to donate to somebody and they gave it to us. So I want to thank him for that connection and um, kind of getting it set up for next season already. Thank you. Mr. Taylor. I was actually kind of disappointed that I never, I didn't know anything about that because I'd worked with Hootie for a number of years and, and I was unaware that we were we're doing that for him because I would have liked to have been present during that uh, uh, ceremony. Uh, I worked a, a number of years with Hootie uh, through a lot of the events with baseball and and old timers games, and uh, so I was I was I was kind of disappointed to see that on Facebook because I was uh, completely unaware of it. That's that's it for me, Mr. Sherman. Well, let's see. Uh, I'd like to ask where we're coming up with the uh, if, if if Bob's been informed or has been working on the bonds that we've been going after. The bonds? Yes. He's talking about oh. the bonds for uh, for past for Dickerson. Uh, no, he hasn't noticed nothing about. It. So we'll have to discuss that. Yeah, we'll have to bring that. Mm -hmm. Bring it forward. Uh, other than that, I'm good. Okay. Um, I think it was a, been a. Uh, it has been a uh, very busy around the town here recently. Uh, we have had a lot of uh, things going on. A lot of water leaks. Uh, like Jason reiterated, they're not paving the streets; they're sealing them. Kind of like you seal your driveway, only in a stronger way. Um, our police department's been very busy. Fire department's been everywhere. Uh, just wish for all those guys to stay safe. That's great. Um, I would like to just say thank you to Susan again. I don't know if she gets enough thank yous. And just for everyone to stay safe. Mr. Booth, I have nothing to say. Okay. I miss Graham. Okay. All right. I, I do have actually one other thing that I kind of got sidetracked there on. I apologize. Was uh, I wanted to uh, uh, thank, um, uh, I believe his name is Chad Waring, uh, for bringing um, the Waylon and Wayne. Waylon? Waylon and Wayne. Waylon and Wayne uh, to Nelsonville this year. Um, they had their eighth annual, I think it's BMW. Uh, Motorcycle, motorcycle ride. ride, so it was pretty cool. They camped out at uh, Hawking College. Um, I saw riders all over town. 275 bikes. So that's 275 bikes. They should have had Becky given all the stats. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but it, there, it did bring uh, quite a few new faces to town, um, which is pretty exciting. A little different venue for us. Um, had the square blocked off with some, a bunch of bikes, and a lot of people camped out at the college. So it was good to see. Uh, you know that collaboration between uh, parties and, and uh, we're glad to see a lot of people out about. They raise money, so the it's about raising money for um, they're raising money money for police and fire for the families and uh, for Scott and Jeff, and then they had several other um, nonprofit organizations that they were raising money for. So most rallies raise money to benefit agencies 
and uh, their biggest one was dogs for veterans that are disabled. Thank you. They've already announced their date for next year. Nice. So um, I think it'd be great if we could get that on the city web page. And uh, you know, these are events that we have coming on in the in the city for next year. It'd be great to start promoting all of those events. That's all. Okay. Um, I have a motion here to go into executive session ORC 121-22 for personnel and legal matters. It'll be a really quick uh, one minute executive session. If you guys could please pause that. Inviting. Motion to go into executive session. Okay. Inviting in um, Mr. Toy. Yep, Second. Okay. Okay. Note to time. Note to time. Okay. At uh, uh, 752. Yep, this is what it's 752. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Mr. Sherman. Yes. Mr. Dumpy. Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. All right. Let's do it. Okay. The time is 8.04. Uh, we're back. I need a motion to come out of the executive session. So moved. I'll second that. Uh, Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Um, yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Taylor, I believe you have a motion to make. Uh, yes, I motion that we um, contact Board of Elections and um, have Mr. Smith removed from the uh, ballot for uh, this November. Okay, second that. Uh, Mr. Duffy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, is that a motion or not? No. Oh, I'm just asking for a motion. Okay, I'll move. Second. Um, Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. 